Hey everyone, Daniel here from Twin Bytes, and I've got a quick little tutorial for you here on Microsoft's whiteboard, which comes with Windows 10. You might find it handy for creating some videos or tutorials with of your own if you're doing some kind of seminars. So here it is. Built into the Windows 10, you'd want to go into the Microsoft Store through the Start menu. In the Store, you can go over to the Search field and type in Whiteboard. And the first thing that comes up in the list here is the Microsoft Whiteboard app. So we'll go ahead and select that. And when it comes up here, it shows you it's from the Microsoft Corporation and it is free. So you can just go ahead and click on the Get button to download and install it. If you get the prompt here to use it across all your devices, it wants you to sign in with your Microsoft account to use that. If you want to and you have a Microsoft account, you can sign in. Otherwise, you can just skip that. So now it says that we can go ahead and install it. So once it's done, you can go ahead and launch it right from here. And it even gives you an option to pin it to your start menu as well. But you can always go into the start menu and add it manually from there, just like any other program. And once it opens for the first time, you may get this update policy notice that you have to accept. And then we can go ahead and click get started. So it gives you a little tutorial when you first open it. And you can go ahead and just click let's go. And again, it's asking us to sign in. Okay, and now we're gonna show you how to use the actual whiteboard. So starting from the top here, we've got uh, arrow pointing to the left. If we click over there, it takes us back to creating a new whiteboard, or we can select from some existing ones that we have open. We can see the previews of some of the existing whiteboards if we wanted to work with them, or we, we can click on it to select it, or click on the three dots here, and we can actually delete it. We can also invite participants from here and export it out right from here but we're gonna just delete this and I'm gonna click on this one to use which is blank but I already have a blank one open so no need to open another blank one moving over to the top right corner we've got the little person with the plus sign this allows us to share the canvas online with anybody that we send the link to so it could be through a Skype chat or a phone conversation and we just email them the link and they're able to follow along right from their computer wherever they happen to be in the world we also have my account that I'm signed in under we can sign out from there and sign in as a different user and then the gears we've got a couple of different options here to look at I'm gonna go through each one of them we've got a cool feature here to convert the shapes that we draw into proper shapes we can also make tables and if you have a pen that you can use on a touch screen whether it's a tablet or a laptop desktop that happens to have a touch screen and you have one of those special pens it's different from using your finger if you use your finger it'll move the canvas around but if you use an active pen that will do the actual drawing you can also export your images that you're happy with and here's where we can clear the canvas if you really screw up and want to start over again. Other than that, you can send your feedback, get some help, and find out more about the product. So let's start with the shapes here, going down. Now you can see we've got a bunch of different colored pens we can choose from. And if I draw a shape that's something simple enough that I shouldn't manage to screw up, and somehow I manage to still do that wrong, all right, so even though it's really squiggly lines, they don't mind as long as it connects uh, properly. So you can see that it converted the uh, horrible square I did into a perfect square. 
and if I was to try and do a circle and of course I'm using a mouse so it's a little harder to do I thought that looked like a pretty good circle but um, there doing it fast is sometimes easier so it took me three tries this time around I got a perfect circle so you can do this with any shape as long as you're close to the design of what you're looking for it will actually do that shape for you so you can experiment with the shapes and see how skilled you are at doing that and right now I seem to be on a roll like a boss so that's pretty awesome and then this is where I screw up Murphy's Law yep anyway there are some multicolored pens that they have here and there's also a highlighter in case you want to highlight things they have an eraser so if you really screw up and want to wipe things out you can do that now one of the things with the eraser you can see here is that I wiped out everything except it will not erase your perfect shapes it only erases everything else around it but it will not erase the perfect shape now I'm gonna go back up here for a moment and clear the canvas and then I'm gonna to explain to you the table options so if we actually go in here and choose a color first I want to start off by drawing a perfect square or rectangle and then I draw one line straight down from top to bottom anywhere inside that box it turns it into a table now with this table you can see that we have a minus and a plus sign so I can actually use these to increase the number of columns and rows of the table and this table seems to be off alignment so it's a little bit off the screen so what I want to do there's two ways of doing this if I use the middle mouse button I can s scroll up and down to zoom in and out but if I click this little checkbox then it switches me to navigation mode so I can click and drag any shapes and images around on the screen then clicking the squiggly line here for writing takes me back in here to writing mode so now I'm able to actually start drawing maybe some shapes and as horrible as they might be and if you draw something that's a little bit bigger than what it can hold then it increases the size of that uh, cell so the table grows with that so you can see we got the highlighter here as well and our eraser we can work with that in here and the eraser doesn't affect our table although as I erase this massive image that's in here and get rid of it it doesn't require as much space so the table size shrinks right back down again okay so let's go and clear this canvas again and I want to show you the ruler the ruler is pretty cool what I can do now is select a pen and anywhere close to it even if I'm on the ruler a little bit actually I gotta start off of it but I can go onto it once I start clicking and scroll drag down along it pick another color and start close to it and whether I'm on or off the ruler doesn't matter as long as I'm close to it and then I can click on the ruler and drag it to move it out of the way if I want to and I can see that it's uh, made those two lines now using the middle mouse button while having the mouse positioned on the ruler I'm able to scroll and I can move the ruler as well to try and line up the lines here on the ruler with the lines that I drew to make it perfect and then choose the color of my pen be close again and then I got my perfect lines now I just click on the ruler one more time to hide it and there we are I got a perfect tic-tac-toe box and a non-perfect circle we'll try one more time to see if I could manage to oh yes I did okay and 
Now what we want to look at is this lasso option. If I select that, I can click and drag to highlight one of the images that I drew. From here I can make a copy of it, I can cut it, I can delete it or add a note to it. So if I copy that and click somewhere else over here, right click and paste. Now it moved the image over here. Now if I want it to move it again, I can highlight it and then uh, cut it or copy it to move it. But if I only want it to move it just slightly, what I'd have to do is click down here on the check mark. I'm into selection view. I can then click on the image to select it. If I can actually do that. And now I can move it. And I can I can position it precisely where I want. And if I wanted to add a note to it, I can add a note. Just in case you weren't sure of what that image is. When you click on it again and select the note icon, you're able to see your note that you wrote previously. Okay, so in here, we also have a undo and a redo. So if I was to draw something here, I can undo it and then uh, there's a redo, of course, in case you accidentally undo too many things. Clicking back to this other view, which is the selection view, we also have an undo and a redo button. Over here, we're able to paste something that was copied into the clipboard from anywhere on your computer. We can also search online for images or even use your webcam, which of course I got mine covered up. So you're not gonna see anything here, but you can take the picture, crop it, hit done, and it imports your picture right into here. And as long as we're in this selection view, I'm able to drag this selfie I took anywhere onto the screen. There's also a notepad or a virtual sticky note, which I can move around here. And when you select it, you can see here that you can also do copy, cut, delete. And as funny as it is, you can add a note to the note. Not sure why you would want to do that, but I think it's just because it's another image and it was just as easy for them to leave that feature there. The three dots in the bottom right corner of this allows you to change the color of your sticky note as well in case you have multiple of them. And we have a image import option so you can import an image from your computer. And that's all of those options in the selection view. We've gone through the options of the drawing view and I believe we've gone through everything on here. And of course you can export the image if you're happy with your end results. And you always have the clear canvas like we've used a few times. Anyway, that is it for my review and setting up and using the Microsoft whiteboard. I'll have links to the products that we discussed in the description box below. And if uh, you'd like to share your comments about what you think of the Microsoft Whiteboard, would you be using it in future videos? Should I be using it for some of the discussions? Would you be using it maybe for school or at work possibly? For collaboration? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and click the little bell icon so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. Bye for now.